Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today we're going to talk to Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. So I have a few things I wanted to chat with him about and to get his opinions on and we'll see how uh, how this conversation goes. I've been really connected to Freddie's energy just as you have, I'm sure. So let's welcome him in. <sighs> Okay. He's been doing this lately, you guys. Like, uh, <laughs> he brings in the cats, like a cat. Like, there's a cat, and it's white and fluffy, and it's got a little bit maybe of gray or something here, but it's like a fluffy cat. And he does it, and literally, okay, so I'm allergic to cats, but obviously it's etheric, it's a psychic thing, so obviously I'm not going to be allergic to it, but he just does it. He thinks it's funny. I don't know why. And then he puts her down. Okay, there you go. He says, all right, all right, and he puts her down. So let's talk, start with that. So what's the deal with the cats, Freddie? I understand you had several cats. It was reflected in the movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, the biopic, supposedly, I guess that's what it's kind of called, or whatever, loosely based on life, the life of you and Queen, the band. What's wrong with cats? He says, what's wrong with cats? Nothing wrong with cats. They're far less fussy than dogs. I'm like, I don't think so, Freddie. I would say the opposite. I have four dogs. And he's like looking at my dog on the couch over there and he's like, they're far less fussy than dogs. Well, it's true. They are less maintenance in some ways, but they definitely have personalities. And he says, you've got to have, you know, animals with attitudes. You've got to, you've got to have that. He says, you've got to respect that. <laughs> which is true of course you would have animals with attitudes he says they have their they've got their own personalities really they do they've got their own personalities i'm sure many animal lovers will agree with me on that mm -hmm. so what happened to your cats after you died he says you know that's a bit of a problem it looks like there are a few that stayed and there were a few that left so I don't know if some friends, he says, yeah, some friends of mine um, took, took a few in. So it looks like there were five or there were three, three and two for some reason. I don't know what that means. Three one place and two another, or there were three and then there were two. There might've been two in the afterlife that, there might've been three left and two already in the afterlife that joined you because I see you with cats. So he says, well, they don't live forever. <laughs> He's kind of joking with me because that's one of the songs that I like is the Who Wants to Live Forever song. That's, that's one of the ones that goes through my mind sometimes, you know? I'm, re I'm discovering Queen music and I haven't, like there are songs and now Fred's gonna just be like, it's true, he's gonna say, it's true. I didn't realize were Queen songs, but I've liked them. I've always liked them. They were awesome, you know? And so I'm like, oh, that's a Queen song? Yes, <laughs> quite the range, really. Like they run the gamut of, of variety, you know? And he says, that's good. You know, he says, that's good. That's good to know. That's good. He says, we, you know, we tried to be, it's not, he says, it's not that we tried to be different. It's that we tried to challenge ourselves to get to different levels and to uh, bring forward different, different parts of ourselves. You know, you have to dig into whatever you have inside that, that creative, uh, it kind of looks like you gotta dig in. And, and he's, not, he's not saying you gotta bring your own emotions forward. That's not what he's talking about. He's like, you gotta dig in and let your creativity come forward and, and flow. You gotta give it some room, you know? He says it's, it's never ending, really. There's so many different things you could write music about or create songs about and so many different um, compilations that things that you could put together and uh, he says I think uh, any musician would or performer for that matter would owe it to themselves to explore and push themselves and go beyond traditional boundaries and well you certainly did that and he says I was just myself he says that's that's what I was okay so if you say that you are yourself and you do get a lot of um, props people really give you a lot of um, um, recognition and acknowledgement for being yourself you know trying to be uh, as much of your put your, as much of your heart and soul into your creative you know into your music and things and, and just to be yourself and just live that way but so 
But that seems like in contrast also to some of the things that I, I've heard. I've, I listened to a radio interview with someone that was an assistant. His name was Peter. And I heard it. It was on my playlist one morning. I thought, I'm going to listen to this. And I started listening to it. I thought I was going to listen to maybe five minutes of it. And it ended up being like, I listened to almost the whole hour of it. It was so good. And he talked about um, how, you were, how you were at home when you were at Garden Lodge and how you were out in public that you like literally would change your out clothes you know you'd put on a leather jacket and sunglasses to go outside the gates and while you're at home you might be in a track suit or something you know he says well that's not uncommon that's how everyone is everyone and he says look at you you're the same he's like that's not uncommon that's just that's just a human habit you know, that's just human patterns, patterns of human behavior, he says. That's just human patterns of human behavior. That's true. But you even have talked about in interviews where you've talked about how, um, I think especially as you matured, as you got, he says, oh, don't say it. Don't say getting older. Don't say grow older. Don't say that I'm so tired of that. But as you changed and settled down more in, you know, just wanted to, found found comfort in being home and having a family or or having a um, friends around you and that and being in a relationship that was committed and whether it be with Jim or earlier on with Mary that you kind of um, recognized that when you were out in public when you were you know getting ready to perform and stuff that you were a performer you were Freddie the performer and then when you're at home you're a different person he says uh, how, so how can you come to terms with that? How can you talk about that a little bit for us? How can you help us understand that? Because I'm not a, I'm not a public, fa like a famous person. I don't understand how people are like two different people, that kind of thing. He says, oh, yes, you do. He says, yeah, sure you do. Sure you do. And he like puts out a cigarette. By the way, he's been smoking this whole time, just so you know. He's been, <laughs> he just puts out, leans forward, puts out a cigarette. And he says, sure you do. Sure you do. He says, Everyone does the same things. Everyone does the same thing. You have a job, you, you dress a certain way, you act a certain way because that's what's appropriate in that environment, that's what's expected, and so you do that. You, in a way, you perform, he says. And then when you're home, when you're at home with your husband, your family, your kids, you, you are different. You are different, it's the same. It's just the same as anyone else. I think, I can't speak for all the famous people of the world. Um, but for me, that's, it's the same. It's not, it's no different than going to a job and it's just a job that I happen to love very much. And it's a big part of who I am. It is a big part of who I am. And he's referring to me too. He's saying, it's not any different than what you do when you're sitting here now, you know, I put on a sweater instead of my zip up hoodie that I had when I ran into town this morning. <laughs> I had just this black zip up hoodie. I put earrings on. Put a little makeup on you know he says it's no different than that it's no different than that hmm. right okay all right your energy is just so beautiful freddie I, I hope that the people who are watching this video can really feel the vibration of you he like puts his hands in he's like sitting across me and he kind of puts his hand in like this so like you could almost feel him <laughs> they can't feel you <laughs> He says, do I need to come closer? Oh, he's going to do that. Okay. <laughs> See if you can feel him, you guys. He's like, and then he gets really close to the camera. He says, practice, practice, practice. Can you see, can you feel me? <laughs> he's like, can you feel it? <laughs> and then he just says, oh, thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I have some more. I have some more. So Freddie Mercury. Give us some advice then on how to be ourselves. How can we better be ourselves as humans, you know? I mean, we know that we're fabulous spirits and then we get crammed into this little body and go on this ride in this vehicle and have life experience and we're supposed to have this, you know, some people like you make a huge mark on the world and some people like me want to do that, want to help other people, you know, to, to, to free themselves to do what they need to do, which was probably make some really awesome contributions to the world you know i want to be part of the people like behind the scenes helping the people that are doing that do that you know i i don't know i just give us some advice there might be entrepreneurs watching there might be healers watching psychics watching there might be 
doctors or students or teachers or someone that's in a really rough spot and they need to know that they're not in the hole. The hole is not some place that they're going to be for the rest of their lives. Give us some insight about how do we become, how do we be more of ourselves? How do we be more of ourselves? He says, well, how am I supposed to respond to that? He's like, boy, you really set that one up. He's like, yeah, you know, he's kind of giving me this. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. How do I respond to that kind of, kind of vibe? All right. Well, let's see. I don't know. He says, you know, I can't speak for anyone else. I'm, I'm nobody's um, representative. He says, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't represent anyone. I just represent myself. And, and now that I'm not a person, I find it much easier to be myself. <laughs> he says, <laughs> he says it's, it, it's, there's a lot of freedom once you, though, but when you are a person, he says, when you are human, you have to remember you're human. It, that doesn't mean you're infallible. He says, you're going to make mistakes, but you've got to push yourself to be better, better than you are today, you know, better than you were yesterday. He says, that's all it is. It's like a one day at a time. It's a one moment by moment for some, you know. It's a wonder I survived some of my times that I, you know, went all crazy and maybe off, you know. He says off the edge. I would say off the deep end, but he's making me feel like it's off the edge or like danced on the edge. He says, you know, he said, it's a wonder I survived as long as I did. And no, I didn't have a death wish. Don't ask me. He's like, don't ask me that. I didn't have a death wish. No, of course not. Of course I did not. He says, but I, in the discovery of yourself, of who you are, you will make some mistakes. You will do some really stupid things, he says, really stupid things. But don't let that stop you from doing them. <laughs> kind of what he said. Come on, Freddie, I need some like positive encouragement for the next generation here, for the 20 year olds that are in college and, you know, maybe on the edge of themselves. Let's, you know, or the 55 year old that's thinking their life is done and they have no more career and they can't play music or they can't start a new job or they can't find their soulmate. Come on, men and women, give us some advice. He says, only you know who you are. It's not a big mystery. It's it's something you just refuse to see. So it's not something I can tell you how to do it and, and what to do. I can't really, really, I can't, I can't, I, I can't. He says, then he leans forward, he puts on another cigarette. He says, I wish I could make it easier for people, but I can't, that's not my, that's not my role. That's not my role. What is your role? You're like this icon and we're talking to you in the afterlife and you're a representative of um, as it was stated, I think, in the movie, talking about like misfits coming together to help other people who feel like they don't belong to, I personally, that's something that I like. I like to, I like to bring people together and have that connection and that community and the energy of belonging. I want people to know that they matter. I want you that are watching to know that you matter. That's why we're about inspiration and hope. That's why we talk to people like Freddie Mercury, former people so that they can inspire you about life because you know his life was not roses and cherries and he says peaches and creams. <laughs> like, okay, roses and cherries is what Bridget says. Peaches and creams, he says. Peaches and creams, okay. He says, yeah, he said, nobody's is. Nobody's life. If your life is perfect, then you're boring. He says, you're boring. You're not, you know, you're definitely not living. You're not doing something right. He says, but it doesn't mean you have to hurry up and be done with it either. It's not about getting, getting on with it to be done with it. It's about, uh, what is it about? Then you tell us, what is it about? What is life about as a human? What, like any reflection now in the afterlife, what is life about? Like, what is the essence of life? He says to enjoy it while you got it. Just enjoy it. He says, that doesn't mean being reckless. That doesn't mean being irresponsible and... Okay, so wait a minute, stop. Are you talking about your health? About choices maybe you made? You know, with like alcohol or drugs, whatever it may have been. I'm not gonna say either one. Or risky behavior where, you know, unprotected sex clearly, obviously. I mean, that's, that's risky behavior for anyone, anyone. No matter your gender, no matter your preferences, whatever, that's, I mean, that's, not healthy, you know. He says, yeah, well, there's a point when, he says, there's a point when you have to stop yourself. 
and really look at what you're doing. Look at yourself. Not, not try to numb yourself or be outside of yourself, but look at yourself. And he says, look at yourself and recognize, who is this? Who am I? Do you know, do you, do you know this person that's doing these things? And for what? What's it for? For just a moment of pleasure or a moment of escape from pain? What? what? What's all this for? What is it for? He says, only you can answer that. You can answer that question for yourself. I can't answer that question for you. You can answer it for yourself. That's what he says. He says, because the answer is different for everyone. Yeah, it is. It is different for everyone. You're right. Because what affects some people doesn't affect other people in the same way. Some people die of overdoses. Some people don't. You know, the first time using drugs, they can die. Or the first time, or the first, second, third time they drink alcohol, off in college or whatever, and they could die of alcohol poisoning. I mean, stuff can happen, you know? The first time you have unprotected sex, you can get an STD or worse, you can get HIV or AIDS, you know? Hmm. He says, you know, part of being a human is not about getting it right. He says, I, I want, he wants to make that point. It's not about getting it right. There's not really a right way or a how, how to do this best. There's only your way and your ways and what you, oh, he's showing me something really kind of sweet. He's talking about like, um, bringing forward your gifts, which isn't like necessarily like your singing voice or your psychic gifts or whatever he's talking about us, but bringing forward who you are, being who you are, letting yourself be vulnerable, letting yourself get into relationships with other people, letting other people know you, letting yourself trust other people, letting your, oh my gosh, you're saying this to me. Oh, geez. And he comes over and he gives me a little hug. Oh, do you want me to make you feel better, Bridget? <laughs> like, okay. He says, we all have things to work on. Yeah, it reminds me, Freddie, it reminds me of that phrase that we're all a work in progress, you know? And I do refer to psychic work, spiritual work, healing work, energy work as art. This is art. It's not an exact science. There's, there's no way we're science. <laughs> when we're art <laughs> so he says quite he says I liked art you know I liked art he says something about I have a statue well I had a statue I don't know do you still have that he says it's different now it looks bronze or something he says it's different now it's different now I had a statue and then he says to me or well, Rami might get a statue Oh, yes. So I'm recording this prior to the Oscars 2019. And the movie Bohemian Rhapsody is up for, I think it's up for Best Picture. I don't know for sure. I think so. And Rami Malek, who is the lead who played Freddy, um, is up for awards. And he's already won many awards. And I got to say, Freddy, I like him. I think he's great. I really do. You know, I li had listened to some interviews that he gave and he just seems like a nice guy, you know like a genuine person. He seems a lot like you, like energetically. Yeah, he says, yeah, we should talk about that. We could talk about that. He says, yeah, he's a good guy, I trust him. He says, I trust him, I trust him. So we should do a video about that and talk about Bohemian Rhapsody and Rami and Queen and all that and kind of give your two cents or two bits or whatever about it. He says, I can tell you, he's like leans forward. He says, I can tell you right now, he was damn good, he was damn good. He was damn good. He says what he was allowed to do anyway, that is, you know, he says, he's damn good. He's damn good. He says, no, we're friends. We're friends. He says, and, and don't, he says, don't buy into the stories. I did not haunt him. He says, I did not haunt him, but I helped him. He says, I helped him. <laughs> Here's this big laugh. All of a sudden he just goes, ah, <laughs> oh, that's funny. He's like, ah. Oh. 
He's laughing so hard. It's kind of hard to not laugh with him. Freddie Mercury is laughing. Big, loud, open mouth, all that. I didn't haunt him, he said, but I helped him. <laughs> oh, dear Freddie, thank you so much for being here. And thank you. Thank you for watching this video at Above Life Channel. We've channeled Freddie Mercury yet again. Why? Because he is really interesting to talk to. He's fun to connect with. He's got a lot of insights and there's so much depth to him as a person, to his legacy, and to his spirit in the afterlife as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember at Above Life Channel, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope. Because this, <laughs> thank you, Freddie. He says, like he's trying to mock, he's like, oh, I like to say, because <laughs> this is your life. And he's like putting his face sideways like this. His face just comes in like this. So live it. <laughs> so live it, he says. <laughs> Oh, I don't even care if you guys like this video. It was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> this is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching. If you did happen to like this video, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Go ahead and put your comments below as well. I tried to read as many as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this Freddie Mercury channeling video, check out the playlist here at Above Life Channel. Go ahead and binge watch and have a wonderful time enjoying the energy of Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. <laughs> Thanks for watching.